Welcome back. So in previous video, we are going to discuss two important questions. So one is axial line question, other one is equatorial line. So once remember that. So question number one. Derive an expression for. So derive an expression for intensity. Intensity of the electric field. Intensity of the electric field at a point, a point, an axial line of axial line of the electric field. So this is very 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 important question. Five marks in this chapter. So this is also one of the most important questions. Next second question. Say so derive an expression for. So derive an expression for. Derive an expression for intensity. So intensity of the electric field. Intensity of the electric field. Intensity of the electric field. At the equatorial equatorial line of flow and electric dipole. So this is also an option. So these two questions are very 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 important in this chapter. Keep on your mind. So next question. So derive an expression for. So derive an expression for arc. So there are expression for arc acting on electric dipole. So in a uniform electric field. So in a uniform electric field. So next one. So there are an expression. So there are an expression for arc acting. Are acting on electric dipole, electric dipole in uniform electric field. In uniform electric field. So we know that what is uniform electric field? Uniform electric field is represented so straight parallel equal distance straight lines. So that is uniform electric field. So in this uniform electric field means intensity of the electric field is spent. Each and every point is same, both magnitude and direction. So that is uniform electric field. So what is the definition for uniform electric field? So in this field, each and every point, the intensity of the electric field is same, both magnitude and direction. So that is called the uniform electric field. So now here. So if we take the uniform electric field, so place in the electric dipole place in the uniform electric field. So what is the expression for that? Okay. So in the question of the now the expression of the derived was. Okay. So now we have to use the uniform electric field. So we know that so this is the uniform electric field. So E is same at each and every point in both magnitude and direction. So this is the uniform electric field. So here E, e. So this is e, e. So uniform electric field. So next one. So electric dipole. So we know that what is the definition for electric dipole? A system of two equal or opposite charges separated by the certain distance or small distance. So that is called the electric dipole. So here electric dipole plays in a uniform electric field. So like this. So here, so let us answer a system of two equal or opposite charges. So one is minus two charge, other one is plus two charge, placed in a uniform electric field. So it makes an angle theta with the direction of the electric field. So in this electric dipole, it makes an angle theta with the direction of the earth. So here also angle theta. Here also angle theta. Then so now electric dipole. No? Theta angle use model, intensity of the electric field direction will use model. Okay, so we know that. So here plus two charge, 
place in the electric field. So force is experience. So we know that what is the formula for intensity of the electric field? F T e is equal to F two by two. So therefore, F T is equal to Q into e. So this is the formula for force. So a charged particle placed in a uniform electric field. So in this case, force is experienced by the charge. So here, what is the value of the force? So here, F is equal to Q into e one. So F is equal to Q e. So here, force to charge. So force is in the direction of the electric field. So you know, if we use the force to charge, it is in the direction of the electric field. So here, negative charge. So negative charge plus the electric field. So here, force is experienced. So what is the formula for force? So F is equal to Q into e. So e is in the opposite direction of the electric field because we take the negative charge. So here, negative charge. So this is one charge. So this is another charge. So this is the center of the. So so here, this is the center of the dipole. So these two are separated by the distance is equal. So this is center of the dipole. So positive charge, the force is in the direction of the electric field. So negative charge will act on a force is in the direction of the opposite to the electric field. Is in the direction of opposite to the electric field. So in this case, net force acting on electric field. So the dielectric force, the electric dipole will act on the net force one is. So net force acting on the electric dipole. So one is Q E. So other one is minus Q. So that is equal to zero. Okay. So it's always. So it's always. So this point is very very important to know your mind. So net force on electric dipole is zero. So net force on electric dipole is zero always. So now we can calculate the torque. So torque acting on electric dipole is not equal to zero. Torque acting on electric dipole is not equal to zero. So torque means uh, so couple. So they can be formed with a couple. So this is the center of the dipole. So this is center. So here Q E. So force is so one force is Q E, another force is uh, so minus Q E. So these two equal are the opposite forces. So they can be formed with the couples. Okay, these two equal are the opposite forces constitute to form a couple. So this couple is acting on electric dipole. So in this electric dipole, is it rotate? So electric dipole is in the rotation in clockwise direction. So like this. So F is equal to Q. This force is acting in this direction. So F is equal to Q. Force is acting in this direction. So this direction. So our electric dipole is in the same direction of the electric dipole. So these two equal are the opposite forces acting on electric dipole. So when dipole is rotating, so when dipole is rotates, so that means it will be means it can be constant to the couple. So torque means it is the rotating effect. So torque or couple is means it is the rotating effect. So these two equal the opposite forces. They can be formed with the constant the couple. Couple means rotating. So when the electric dipole is rotating, so when the dipole, the electric dipole is rotating. So finally, so in this electric dipole is in the direction of the electric field. So like this. So this is. So this is the perpendicular distance. So like this. Okay, ma'am. So these two equal and opposite forces constitute to form a couple. So couple means it is the rotating effect of the electric dipole. So finally, it is in the direction of the electric field. So it is in the direction of the electric field. So therefore, so now calculate the torque R couple. So torque is equal to so force into perpendicular distance between two charges. Perpendicular distance between two charges. So these two equal or opposite forces, they can be formed by the couple. So like this, they can be formed by the couple. So then finally, so this is the electric dipole. So these two equal or opposite forces, they can be formed by the couple. So finally, electric dipole is in the direction of the electric field. So this is perpendicular distance. Okay. So here, force on any one charge. So tau tau is equal to so this is tau is equal to force into so 
perpendicular distance. So this is A. So this is B. So this is C. So BC is represents the perpendicular distance. So BC. So BC is the perpendicular distance. So here angle theta. So here also angle theta. So dipole which makes an angle theta with the direction of the earth. So, yeah. so now if you use the so triangle ABC. So triangle ABC. So by using this sine function, so sine theta is equal to opposite. So this is adjacent, this is hypotenuse. So opposite side by hypotenuse. So that is BC divided by AB. Okay. So sine theta is equal to so BC. So BC is equal to then find out the BC value. So next to AB. So AB is equal to distance between two charges that is 2A. So therefore, so BC is equal to 2A sin theta. So this is the value of BC. So this value is equal to 2A sin theta. So this is the perpendicular distance. 2A sin theta. So the BC is equal to substitute in this equation. R O is equal to force. So force on any one charge. So force acting on minus Q charge, what is the value of Ft? So force acting on plus Q charge, what is the value of Ft is equal to G. So these two are equal magnitude but are in opposite direction. So then if we take the magnitude of the force, so Ft is equal to QE into, so what is the value of B, BC? BC is equal to 2A sin theta. So now in this equation, it can be written as Q into 2A into E sin theta. So we know that, so every dipole, so here we take the dipole, so dipole is then the compulsory with the dipole moment in the So every dipole having the dipole moment. So P is equal to Q into 2A. So this is the dipole moment. So now substitute the value of four. P. So here Q into 2A is replaced by P. So therefore, so therefore, so tau tau is equal to P E. So P E sin theta. So this is the formula for torque. So this is the expression for torque acting on electric dipole placed in a uniform electric field. So what is the final expression for torque? Torque tau is equal to P E sin theta. So these two equal and opposite forces constant. They can be formed with a couple. Couple means rotating. Then finally the electric dipole is rotates in clockwise direction. So like this direction, this is clockwise direction. So net force on electric dipole is zero. So it is always. So torque net torque on electric dipole is not equal to zero. They can be formed with the torque because of torque produced just the rotating effect. So rotating effect means torque. Okay, electric dipole produced just the torque. So here therefore what is the formula for torque? Torque power is equal to P E sin theta. So this is the very very important expression. So therefore, torque power is equal to P E sin theta. So here P is called so dipole moment. So E is the electric field. So theta is the angle between P and E. So this is the expression for torque. Okay. So now next one. So what is the final expression for torque? Torque power is equal to P E sin theta. So by using this expression. So torque tau is equal to P E sin theta. So here, so theta is the angle between P bar and E vector. P vector and E vector. So here P vector and E vector. So P E sin theta it can be written as torque tau is equal to P bar cross E bar. So the cross product of two vectors gives the another vector. So therefore, tau is equal to P E sin theta. It can be written as torque tau is equal to E bar cross E bar. So in what condition torque is maximum? So in what condition torque is minimum? So next we shall discuss torque is maximum and torque is minimum. So minimum torque is equal to maximum torque is equal to minimum. So therefore, torque tau is equal to P e sin theta. So by using this formula, theta is the angle between E bar and E bar. So here P is one. So P vector is parallel to E vector. So P vector parallel to E vector means P and E are in same direction. So therefore, what is the angle theta is equal to zero degree. So here sin zero. 
so sin zero is equal to zero. So therefore, tau of tau is equal to zero into anything zero. So this is the minimum tau. So this is minimum tau. So when tau is minimum, so in what condition p is parallel to e? Okay. So next to second one, case two. So p vector is perpendicular to e vector. So p vector is perpendicular to e vector. So what is the angle between so theta equal to 90 degree? So therefore, sine 90 degree is equal to one. So sine 90 degree is equal to one. So in this situation, so tau tau is equal to e. So this is the maximum tau. So this is maximum tau. So next to tau one. So p is anti-parallel to e. So p vector is anti-parallel to e vector. So theta is equal to one eighty degree. So sine one eighty degree value is two. So sine one eighty degree is also zero. So therefore, so tau tau is equal to zero. So tau tau is equal to zero. So sine one eighty degree is equal to zero. Okay. So tau tau is equal to zero. This is the minimum tau in this case. Electric dipole is in stable equilibrium. So, in condition of electric dipole, I need to write the stable equilibrium. So, next one is the anti-parallel to E. So, theta is equal to 180 degree. So, in this case, electric dipole is in unstable equilibrium. Unstable equilibrium. Okay. So, this is stable equilibrium. So, this is unstable equilibrium. So stable equilibrium means it regains the original position. Unstable equilibrium means it does not regain the original position. This is stable equilibrium. This is unstable equilibrium. So these conditions are represented by the maximum tau, minimum tau, and zero tau. Okay. So tau tau is equal to zero minimum. So tau tau is equal to e. This is the maximum tau values in the different conditions. So when tau is maximum and minimum, so this is the expression for tau acting on the electric dipole, place in a uniform electric field. Okay. The next one. So the next question. So the next question. Electric flux. So this is very important question. So in short to type questions only. So this is very important. So electric flux. Electric flux. So it is denoted by I. Electric flux. So flux is a lacking word. So flux is a lacking word. It means it means to flow. So flux means to flow. So flow represents more than flux. So flux is a Latin word. It means to flow. So what is the definition for electric flux? So electric flux is represents the quantity of electric field. Electric flux is represents the. So it represents the. So it represents quantity of electric field lines. So quantity of electric. Field lines. So quantity of electric field lines. So this is the electric flux. So electric flux is represents the quantity of electric field lines. So what is the definition for electric flux? The number of electric field lines passing through normally an area. So that is called electric flux. The number of electric field lines passing through normally surface area. So that is called the electric flux. So number of electric field lines, electric field lines passing, passing normally, normally through an surface area, an surface area. So this is called the electric flux. Okay, the number of electric field lines passing 
normally through and surface area so that is called the electric flux so it is denoted by pi e so pi e means electric flux so flux is a latin word it means flow so it represents the quantity of electric fields so electric flux is represents the quantity of electric fields so what is the definition for electric flux the number of electric fields passing normally through an surface area so this is the electric flux so we shall discuss electric flux so first of all so this is the area so this is the area a so here it is passing through the number of electric field lines so this is electric field lines so passing through a area so a number of electric field lines passing through a surface so this is the surface number of electric field lines passing through the surface area so that is called the electric flux so here we have the flux first of all electric flux so electric flux is directly proportional to electric field so number of electric field lines will depend so electric flux is directly proportional to so electric flux is directly proportional to electric field so electric field will depend so what is electric field so number of field lines on the place where the jaasti da vadre electric field is strong ide a place where the electric field is more smaller number of field lines on the place where da vadre adralli enagutte electric field is big so electric field is more or less it is represented by the number of electric field lines so number of electric field lines formed at a place electric field is more strong so number of electric field lines formed less at a place electric field is less or weak okay so here so the number of electric field lines passing through normal to surface area so they can be formed by the flux so therefore flux is directly proportional to intensity of the electric field so number of field lines does the there is flux in the field so number of field lines electric field lines karne ke liye flux ko karne ke liye so both are directly proportional so flux is directly proportional to electric field so in next one in next one so here we have the two areas so this is the so one surface this is another surface this is one surface so this is another surface so now passing through the number of electric field lines to a surface area okay so like this so this is a number of electric field lines so this is the area a one this is the area a so a smaller area occupies the smaller number of electric So larger area occupies the number of electric field lines. Okay, so therefore electric flux is directly proportional to area of the surface. Electric flux is directly proportional to area of the surface. So the surface area A one, the surface area A two. So A one surface area having smaller number of electric field lines. Smaller number of electric field lines means the flux is permanent. So that is the due to flux. Okay, so if a larger area is there, the electric field is passing through, or crossing through the area is more, electric flux is more. So therefore, finally, electric flux is directly proportional to area. So this is second. So next to power point. So this is the electric field. This is the electric field. So this is the surface area. This is surface area. so this is a is the area of the surface so a is the area of the surface this is the surface electric field is passing through the area so area and e are in same direction so here theta equal to 0 degree theta equal to 0 degree so in this case flux is maximum so here flux is maximum so both are in same direction so next one So this is the electric flux. So this is the electric flux. So E. So this is the surface. So this is the surface. So area is perpendicular to electric field. So here area is in the same direction of the electric field. So theta equal to zero. The power flux is maximum. So if theta equal to 
90 degree so in this case flux is minimum flux is minimum so by using this three third equation so electric flux is directly proportional to cost so cost zero degree is one so that is max cost 90 degree is zero so that is minimum so theta equal to zero degree means a is in the direction of the electric field so flux is maximum so a is in the perpendicular to the electric field so the flux is minimum so pi e is directly proportional to cost so by combining these three equations so by combining these three equations the final equation is so electric flux pi e is equal to a cos theta so electric flux pi e is equal to a cos theta so this is the expression for electric flux so electric flux pi e is equal to a cos theta so this is the formula for electric flux so electric flux depends upon e electric flux depends upon a electric flux depends upon theta so these three factors depends upon electric flux so ea cos theta so ea cos theta it can be written as e bar dot a bar so the dot product of two vectors so e bar is a vector so area a bar is a area area is a vector so we know that other than doubt it is all area is a vector physical quantity so the dot product of two vectors gives the scalar so therefore electric flux is a scalar physical quantity so electric flux is a scalar why because the dot product of two vectors gives the scalar product so here by using scalar product the dot product of two vectors gives the scalar so therefore electric flux is a scalar physical quantity so electric flux is a scalar physical quantity so in this equation similar to by using like this form so pi e is equal to so e so area by using delta s into cos theta so by using sum so therefore pi e is equal to sigma into e delta s cos theta so e delta s cos theta so this is the mathematical form of the electric flux so okay the next one so next it is so this is the area element okay. so this is the direction of the electric field so this is the direction of the vector a so this is the angle so a r delta s by using any one so here the final equation so pi e is equal to sigma e delta s cos theta so by using this expression how to define electric flux so electric flux through in the electric field electric flux through a field so electric flux through in the electric field is defined as the product of component of the electric field normal to the surface and the surface area so that is called the electric flux so this is another definition for electric flux so first definition here is now the total number of electric field lines or the number of electric field lines passing through normally surface area normally through surface area so next one by using this one so electric flux in the electric field electric flux through the electric field so electric flux in the electric field surface is defined as the product of component of electric field normal to the surface and surface area so it is the product of it is the product of it is the product of component of electric field component of electric field component of electric field component of electric field normal to the surface normal to the surface so this is e cos theta so this is the component of electric field means e cos theta and surface area surface area so this is delta s so this is the definition for electric flux okay 
so it is the product of component of electric field normal to the surface and the surface area so this is called the electric flux so we know that so electric flux is a scalar physical quantity it is a scalar so what is the si unit so electric field into area so that means newton meter square into meters newton meter square into meters or so weber so newton meter square into meters or weber so here by using this one so newton meter square into meters so by using this one so how to write the dimension formula so newton so that is force so what is the dimension formula m l t power minus 2 so m is a meter that is distance distance with the dimension formula l square c means charge coulomb so that is a v whole power minus 2 so that is equal to m l into l square l t power minus 2 power minus 1 so that is t power minus 3 next to a inverse so this is the dimension formula for electric flux so electric flux dimension formula m l t t power minus 3 a inverse m l t t power minus 3 a inverse so it is a scalar physical quantity so s i t t is newton meter square per coulomb or newton meter square coulomb inverse or weber so next term, electric field lines so enter so that means inverse so inverse flux so inverse flux it can be taken as negative so inverse flux can be taken as negative so number of field lines are outwards so outwards flux outward flux it can be taken as positive so electric field lines are like the surface flux it can be taken as negative electric field lines outwards the surface so flux it can be taken as positive so inwards plus it can be taken as negative outward flux it can be taken as positive so this is the electric flux so the si unit is newton meter square coulomb inverse or weber so dimension formula is m l t t power minus 3 a inverse so the next one so the same electric flux so by using the so non uniform electric field so so here by using the formula for electric flux so flow integral e bar dot ds bar is equal to electric flux so this is closed surface okay closed surface so by using closed surface so electric flux so pi is equal to e bar dot ds bar is equal to pi so this is also another formula for electric flux so integral flows flows integral e bar dot ds is equal to electric flux so this is the so this is the information about the electric flux so next we shall discuss the so gauss law or gauss law so this is the important topic so gauss law or gauss law so gauss law and gauss law are all one thing you will know so here So electric flux now discuss one. So electric flux. So electric flux discuss one time only. Until sorry, now Gauss's law or Gauss law we discuss. So electric flux is denoted by pi. So electric flux and any now Gauss law electric flux and any already discuss one. So what is electric flux? The product of component of electric field normal to the surface. Under the surface area, so that is called the electric flux. So here we shall discuss the area vector. So area vector. So here area vector. So this is an area vector. So area vector direction. So direction is perpendicular to plane surface. So area vector direction is perpendicular to plane surface. So, for example, in the case of two-dimensional surface, so 2D surfaces, so 2D surfaces means open surfaces. 
So to be surface means open surface. So for example, so this is the axis. So x, y, z. So if we take the square, so this is the square. So here O, A, B, C. So here small a, small a side, side is small a. So what is the area of the square? So area of the square a is equal to a square. So a is equal to a square. So here, so area vector. So area vector is equal to. So area vector is equal to. So a b bar cross b c bar. So now if we take a b bar cross b c bar. So we are now using a b cross bar b b c. So here a bar cross b bar. So we know that a bar cross b bar it can be written as a b sine theta. Okay. So here a b is a. So here a a. So a bar cross b bar it can be written as. So we know that a bar plus b bar it can be written as a b sine theta into n cap. The n cap is a unit. So a a. So a b b c. So a b is a. B c is a. So here what is the angle between? So a b and b c angle is to 90 degree. Okay. So that is sine 90 degree. Sine 90 degree is equal to one. So that means one into a a a into a a square. So this is a square. So n cap. So here area vector is perpendicular to the plane of the paper. So this is x y plane. So x y plane only square there. So then perpendicular to the plane of the paper means in this direction. So in this direction represents the area vector. So this is the z direction. So z direction means that is k cap or so a square is equal to minus k cap. So area direction is the outward angle of the is on the inverse angle. Okay. To the surfaces, area is both are correct. So inward angle both is on the outward angle. So this is very very important. Okay. So here a bar plus b bar, you know that resultant r is equal to a bar plus b bar. So the direction of r bar is so the direction of r bar is plane perpendicular to so plane perpendicular to a bar and b bar so direction is a bar b bar perpendicular only so here x y is perpendicular to z so z axis means the direction is so the outward angle both is on the inward angle so here a square k cap yeah, or a square minus k a square minus k so in this case in this 2d surfaces both directions are correct and the outward angle both so inwards are outwards. Okay, so both directions are correct. So in the case of 2D surfaces, so 2D surfaces is known as the open surfaces. So next another example. So this is second example. So this is the x y. So this is x y. So here also z. So now if we take the so so right angle. So this is the rectangle. So rectangle length length breadth b. So now find out the area. So area a is equal to length into breadth. Okay. So x y plane to area vector and the other is perpendicular to plane containing x and y. X and y. Okay. Along y. So y axis can be written as to a. Or so this is equal to l b minus b. Okay. Outward angle of both is on the inward angle. So in this case, so in this case of two D surfaces or open surfaces, both directions, both directions are correct. Both directions are correct. So very very important. So area of the direction is perpendicular to plane of the surface. So in plane of the paper, it is by plane of the paper. Perpendicular direction of the area vector. So the inward angle of the other outward angle. So in this 2D surfaces, is also called as open surfaces. Both directions are correct. So both directions are correct. So inward angle of the other outward angle. Okay, both directions are correct. So next one. So in case of 3D surfaces. So 
So 3D surfaces is called the closed surfaces. So 3D surfaces means closed surfaces. So closed surfaces. So 3D surface. 3D surface means closed surface. So closed surface. So in this closed surface or 3D surfaces, only, only outward normal, outward normal considered as considered as area. Only outward normal. अरे पूरी सरफेस अंदर इनवर्ट मार्क लाइन के बोलो आउटवर्ट मार्क लाइन नहीं बोलो बट थ्रीडी सरफेस दैट इट्स क्लोज सरफेस सो थ्रीडी सरफेस है सर ओपन सरफेस सो थ्रीडी सरफेस है सर क्लोज सरफेस इन दिस क्लोज सरफेस ओनली आउटवर्ट नार्मल कंसीडर्ड एज ए एरिया वेक्टर सो फॉर एग्जांपल सो फॉर एग्जांपल सो यहां पे देख लीजिए क्यूब सो दिस इज थ्री डायमेंशन दिस इज द क्यूब The cube is like the three-dimensional body. The three-dimensional body is nothing but closed surface. Okay, so this surface here, this is the surface. So area vector over now. So this is nine. So here also area vector over so now. This is nine. So here also area vector over so now. Here also nine. So here also area vector over now. So this is also nine. So one is in this direction, other one is in this direction. So this is the cube. So cube can be the all surfaces now. The area now only outward normal is considered. Only outward normal. Okay. So next. Thing. So in the case of cylinder. So for example, here in the case of the cylinder. So this is the cylinder. Okay. So this is the cylinder. So here area is over now. So this is nine. So here also area is over now. So here also area is over now. So here also area vector is over. So this is cylinder. So this is cube. So this is cylinder. Okay. So this is three D surfaces or closed surfaces. So next in the form of the sphere. So this is the sphere. Okay. So this is sphere. So like this, so here also same. So area, so here also area, so here also area vector. So here also consider as area vector. Here also consider as area vector. So only over normal, so perpendicular. So like this. So this is the sphere. And this is very very important thing. So two D surfaces are there. Two directions are so correct. What is inward? Other one is outward. But the 3D surfaces are the now used more than the only outward normal. Only outward normal. So this is very very important. Now. Next question is not really can I use it? Okay. The most time now we like that idea. So one more time. Okay now. So Q is the other 3D surface. That is the floor surface. So area vector is outward normal. Okay. Other 2D surfaces can be used more than the. Now square is more than the rectangular is more than the circle is more than the two. So two D surfaces only. Both directions are correct. One is outward, other one is inward. Okay, ma. So two directions correct. But in the case of the three D surfaces, that is the two D surfaces. So only outward directions are outward normal. So considered as a area vector. So this is the area vector. Very very important. So next one. So next we shall discuss the glasses. So glasses are opposite part. So this is very 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 important statement. So one more question I have to ask. So this is very very important. Okay. So next one. Glasses are opposite. Glasses are opposite in electrostatics. So here, first of all, statement. Statement. So this is very very important statement. So what is the statement? The total electric flux. The total electric flux passing through any closed surface, any closing charge, any closed surface. Closed surface means 3D surface. Okay. So gas line applicable for 3D surfaces. 
economic is very important. The total electric flux passing through any closed surface, any closing charge is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the magnitude of the charge enclosed. So, enclosed means inside. Okay, magnitude of the charge enclosed. So, this is the statement of the Hass's law of Hass's. So, very, very, very important statement. Keep on your mind. So, this is the very, very important question in your board exam. Okay, so what is the statement of Hass's law? The total electric flux or the net electric flux passing through any closed surface, that is 3D surface, any closing charge is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the magnitude of the charge enclosed. Here now epsilon naught and is used more than the meaning in room. So here free space medium and now use more than the Okay, the closed surface placed in vacuum or free space. So we know that free space means here are what? Okay. So what is the statement? The total electric flux. The total electric flux. The total electric flux passing through, passing through, passing through a closed surface. So closed surface means 3D surface. Closed surface. This is the 3D surface. So n closing charge. So n closing charge is in vacuum. N closing charge is in vacuum is equal to is equal to so one by epsilon naught times. So one by epsilon naught times one by epsilon naught times magnitude magnitude of charge. Magnitude of charge n closed. So this is the statement of the cusp. Okay. So, so there are so many definitions. We can write any one definition. We can write any of the definition. We can write without any marks. Okay. So the total electric flux passing through a closed surface in vacuum. In what? Mahatma Jano Parayi Bolo. The closed surface is in vacuum. So is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the charge inside. 1 by epsilon naught times the charge inside. So that is the statement of Gauss's law or Gauss's. Okay. So very, 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 very important statement. Keep on your mind. Gauss law in electrostatics. State Gauss law in electrostatics. So the total electric flux passing through any closed surface. So that means 3D surfaces. Enclosing charge is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the magnitude of the charge enclosed. So, this is the statement of the Gauss's law. Okay, or Gauss's. So, what is the expression? That means mathematical form of Gauss's law. So, mathematically, so mathematically, so Gauss's law it can be expressed as closed integral e bar dot ds that means e bar vector dot ds vector is equal to q inside so q inside divided by epsilon naught so this is the mathematical form of gauss okay so very 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 important expression so closed integral e bar dot ds is equal to q inside divided by epsilon naught so this is the mathematical expression for Gauss law. So what is the statement of Gauss law? The total electric flux passing through a closed surface, a closed surface that is 3D surface, enclosing charge, enclosing charge is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the magnitude of the charge enclosed. 1 by epsilon naught times the magnitude of the charge enclosed. So this is the statement of the gases. So this gases are coming from first closed surfaces. That is 3D surfaces. So mathematically, so how to write the expression for gas law? Closed integral e bar dot ds is equal to 2 inside divided by epsilon naught. So closed integral e bar dot ds is equal to 2 inside divided by epsilon naught. So now in this equation. So closed integral 
flow is the V bar the V S is equal to electric flux. Okay. Oda, is it right? So flow is the V bar the V S is equal to pi. So I already discussed like this one. So flow is the V bar the V S is equal to pi. So then substitute the value. So therefore pi is equal to two divided by x gamma. So two inside divided by x gamma. So this is the mathematical formula for the system. So x naught is equal to permittivity of free space. So permittivity of free space. Free space. So closed surface is in vacuum. Closed surface is in free space. That means air or vacuum. So permittivity of free space. So here air and is not all otherwise vacuum and is not all. Okay. So x naught is equal to permittivity of free space. So this is the mathematical expression or statement of the Gauss's law or Gauss's law. Okay, so very 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 important. Keep on your mind. So this is the very very important question. Okay, so this is the state of the mathematical mathematical form of Gauss's law or Gauss's law. Next one. Next one. Next question. Next question. Charge distribution. Next one. Charge distribution. So charge distribution. Okay. So distribution of charge. So charge distribution of distribution of charge. Both of us. So charge distribution. So charge distribution. So two types. One is non-continuous. Non-continuous. Charge distribution, non-continuous charge distribution. So second one is continuous charge distribution, continuous charge distribution. So one is non-continuous charge distribution. So other one is continuous charge distribution. So for example, so what is non-continuous charge distribution? So this is the body. So a charge is discontinuous, so like this. So a charge is discontinuous. So this is the non-continuous charge distribution. So charge is distributed discontinuously. So this is called the non-continuous charge distribution. So here, so continuous charge distribution. So this is the body. So our sphere. A charge is distributed continuously, so like this. So this is the continuous charge distribution. So this is continuous charge distribution. This is non-continuous charge distribution. So next one. So continuous charge distribution is of three types. So there are three types of continuous charge distribution. There are three types of continuous charge distribution. So first one is. So linear, linear charge distribution. So linear charge distribution. So second one, surface charge distribution. Surface charge distribution. So third one, volume charge distribution. Volume charge distribution. Okay, so these are the continuous charge distributions. Okay, so charge distributions are two types. So one is non-continuous charge distribution. So one other one is continuous charge distribution. So a charge distributes non-continuously. So that is called non-continuous. So when a charge is distributed continuously, so that is continuous charge distribution. So continuous charge distribution of three types. One is linear charge distribution. So second one is surface charge distribution. So third one is volume charge distribution. So here linear charge distribution means linear charge density. So linear charge density. So surface charge distribution means surface charge density. So next volume charge distribution is nothing but volume charge density. So these two. These three topics I will discuss in the next video. Okay.
so this three linear charge distribution and surface charge distribution and the volume charge distribution surface the same of next video so thank you